So I'm planting today. I really love planting. Summer's gonna kind of look after itself now. All the summer plants are in, obviously we're harvesting all of those. There's not much to do other than watering and harvesting. So my attention now is fully focused on autumn, winter and spring. I'm doing a lot of planting today for autumn, but I'm doing a bit for uh, winter and spring. So uh, I'm gonna get on. I'll show you what I'm planting, where I'm planting, what the successions are gonna be and all of that sort of thing. So you get a good idea of what like what uh, season extension is all about. For the third time, I think I'm just reading the book, uh, The Good Life by Scott and Helen Nearing. And in that book, there's a quote that I really like, which goes something along the lines of, the good life is built by aspiration and effort. And I think that's just perfect for gardening in general, but it's equal, even more perfect, I think, for planting. I don't find the same thing with sowing seeds, but I do find the same, that kind of aspirations start to really build uh, as I start to plant. That's when, you know, really attention to detail is worthwhile. Where you're going to plant, thinking about what your follow on crop's going to be, doing your soil prep, making sure everything's well weeded, healthy seedlings in the ground. It's all then about aspiration. You've done everything you can. Now it's kind of down to the weather and your ability to just give them a little bit of TLC and effort you know gardening it's hard work sometimes uh, but it's always worth it let's get on so these are the seedlings that i'm putting in Got a last succession of beetroot we won't get to really big beetroot but i expect sort of this sort of size hopefully which should still be really nice and these are mainly uh, golden beetroots and uh, we don't have so much of those so as you know trying to get as many as i can in the ground and then I've got my first succession since spring of Asian greens. There's some tatsoi, some red pak choy, and some uh, joy choy there. And then I've got some chicories, some lettuces, and some more lettuces. And basically, I'm going to fill every gap that I've got on the plot. I'll start with this bed in the polytunnel. It will have winter lettuce in October, mid-October, so about 10th to the 14th of October. So there's plenty of time there to get an Asian green harvest out of that space. So I'm going to fill that up. So I find that uh, Asian greens are particularly great for gap filling like this. You know, when you've only got a short harvest window. Things like lettuce and radish are good as well. But uh, yeah, I particularly am a big fan of Asian greens. So I'm popping in tatsoi, which is my favorite of the Asian greens for salads. And uh, and then we've got red pak choy and joy choy, which are better in cooking, I think. Although I'm sure that some people like them in salads as well. The only thing you need to look out for, especially in a polytunnel, is there are quite a few kind of caterpillar pests that uh, sometimes take advantage of these little plants. So I'm going to spray in here with the uh, soil bacteria, Bt, uh, and that should take care of any caterpillars. It's better to do it preventatively because, well, if you're anything like me, you just don't notice the problem until it's too late. Whereas, uh, you know, if you do it in advance and anticipate a problem, you're probably gonna be all right. It's a good idea to use BT in polytunnel as well, which is why I've chosen to put these in here rather than outside because it washes off in the rain. And actually it's not that warm here generally in August, so they should be fine heat-wise. They should just grow fast. And if they do happen to go to seed again, also that doesn't really matter that much because 
this is just the first succession of three successions that I will be planting. Uh, so there's plenty of follow-on crops. So these little babies have followed beetroot and carrots. And I've put a few slug pellets down because slugs and snails absolutely love Asian greens. And as I say, I've sprayed them and I've trimmed off the side shoots of those tomatoes. So everything should be good to go for those. And next up are the beetroot and they're going in a deep cold frame after onions and they'll stay in there until about November time. Uh, I'll be harvested probably through October and November. Then in December, late lettuces will go in and they're the ones that will be harvesting in March. So that's the first bed of those. I'm just going to fill gaps with the rest of them. So this next bed is going to be chicory. So this isn't a red chicory, it's a kind of golden chicory with red flecks in it. And this will also be out of the ground in sort of November time, November, early December. And this will also be followed by winter lettuce. Well, sorry, lettuce planted in winter to be harvested in March. So I'm not exactly sure how big this particular variety of chicory gets. So I might have to harvest every other one as thinnings. But uh, anyway, we'll see how this goes. So once I harvest the spring lettuce from here, I'll be planting estima potatoes for baking. Next up, lettuces for late summer and early autumn. And then this bed will be cleared and planted with late spinach. And so I'm giving them quite a lot of space because I want them to grow fast, but I also want to give them enough space so that they can heart up and I probably won't harvest these cut and come again because it's just so much easier to harvest the whole heads when you know you're going to be taking the plants out. I'm choosing varieties that are not particularly great in winter but are great in summer and autumn. So there's all the lettuces. Getting a bit bashed around in this wind but weather improves tomorrow. So I've finished off those spare beetroot around the edges of the pepper bed. There's loads of beetroot already around the edges. They're reds, new ones are goldens. All my gaps are now filled. Of course all of these peppers will be coming out during October along with these lettuces. Everything will be replanted for winter and spring. I've got some guardsman salad onions in in between these beetroot now and the ones at the back have got sort of four or five uh, seedlings per module and the ones at that end there have got seven to nine so hopefully these will come first and then those will be ready later so I'll give a bit of a succession there. So now I'm going to clear this bed this was smoothie mixes um, but uh, yeah it all got a bit overgrown couldn't keep up with harvesting it while, we're, while I was away so anyway it's ready to come out now it's all going to seed and uh, get that replanted. Give this bed of good water all the caterpillars and cutworms and things coming up to the surface so I'll get rid of all those obviously. That's another one done a few charred plants and mostly kales Carvalho Nero and Dwarf Green a lot good. of space left in here because there's a lot of turnips going in pretty soon. So if you want more details about the way that I garden make sure you look down in the description below and you'll find links to all sorts of different resources including my gardening app, my book etc etc and if you want to know more details about the specific things that I sowed, uh, sorry, planted today then uh, again look down in the description below and go to the reference information section and look up this month and you'll see all the different things that I sowed this month, all the different things that I planted this month, etc. So hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.